Hello, I am Hunter Wilson, and I am not Scott Manley, so apologies for that. Um, this is my first time ever recording a playthrough of Kerbal Space Program, but it's been recommended to me by multiple friends of mine and some of the kids I work with at school, so I'm going to give that a shot. Now, I have been a Kerbal veteran for at least a year or two. Um, I've watched Scott Manley almost religiously, so I... I think I know what I'm doing most of the time, so I, I, I'm i going to try and, uh, by the way, it's awkward speaking into an empty room for the first time ever, but I think I'm going to try and uh, do a career mode, um, because recently they've updated to the beta, and now that implements uh, pretty much all the full options that uh, the squad developer team has wanted to implement. Um, so we're going to give that a try. Um, I think career mode still needs some fine-tuning to get the uh, payouts for different uh, contracts done properly, but um, it's still pretty good. So let's give that a shot. Uh, now start new. Uh, we're going to call this Vagrant123 after my uh, YouTube channel. Um, why the hell not? Difficulty options. Um, I'm gonna go with moderate. I've I've tried hard mode before, and it's you're often left and reduced to repeating quests over and over, such as um, uh, recording sci science from space, and it ends up being sort of a drudge drudgery. Um, whereas with the lower difficulties, it's not so bad. So, we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. Alright, moderate, career, ch -ch -ch -ch. oh yeah, let's get a flag. Uh, my favorite fictional company happens to be Strutco, so we'll go with that. Alright, start. Now, I'm using Bandicam for the first truly done, um, oh thanks, thanks Gene. Uh, I've never actually done video capture software before, so I am brand spanking new to the whole thing. Uh, Alright, so here we are at the Space Center. Everything's looking fine and dandy. Uh, rather puny, too, but what? hey, what, what can you ask for? So let's start out with the first oh, contract. Alright, we got launch a new vessel. Mm -hmm, Duh. Mm -hmm. uh, set an altitude record of 5,000 meters. Good to go. And we've maxed out our contracts. All right, uh, moving swiftly onward, let's go to the VAB. Now, most of you who have done career mode, that, uh, hi Werner, thanks. I'm not a newbie. Um, most of you have probably done uh, career. I'm sorry, most of you. Most of you who have done career mode. Um, have probably done this part already. I mean, it's pretty simple. You you have like three parts to go with. You got your fuel tank, your basic LVT 30 engine, and a solid rocket booster. Um, for your first mission, you probably want to go with the solid rocket booster. Um, make sure to check your staging because you don't want the parachute and the rocket to activate at the same time. Um, I have a tendency to name vehicles in career career mode pretty unimaginatively. So, surprise, V1. Um, also, it's incredibly awkward to talk to yourself. This is, uh, I, I, I've already mentioned this, but this is the first time I've ever done that, um, done video recording. And so, let's see, we've got Jeb in the cockpit. He likes to hop in without provocation. All right, um, this looks like a good first rocket. Let's take it out to the pad. Now this, but when you ah, I, I screwed that up. Apologies. So when you're first starting out in the new career mode, um, what ends up happening is you can't get your curveballs out once you're in the air. So if you aren't, um, so if you're flying, do not expect to get science from that right away. So I'm doing the. Uh, Typical grab science BS to help uh, save some uh, or save some money 
and then do science at the same time. So I'm going to turn SAS on. I throttled up out of habit. Honestly, you don't need to throttle up with the solid rock booster. The sh if you played Kerbal, you know this. Solid rock boosters, once they're started, they just keep going. Um, okay, SAS on. Everything's pretty. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody in the bunker, but if they are, they're probably pretty safe because solid rocket boosters do like nothing. Woo! Alright, so we completed our first contract for launching a vehicle. Gee, that was easy. And zoom out here. I have to say, with, with the recent upgrades, they sure made Kerbin look a lot prettier. Before, it was pretty uh, bland. Now it's actually rather pretty. So we've exceeded 5,000 meters. I'm actually going to turn this in the hopes that I don't break the next record. Because if you've... Uh, there's actually a height record that you can miss easily on this first mission, and I believe I may have gone over it. It's either 1250 or 15,000 15, meters. Either way, I broke that, so that's money lost. Um, it's not a huge deal, it, but it's money lost early in the game when you need it most. Also, in real life, you would never activate parachutes like this because that makes no freaking sense. Um, so we're going to fall back down. Probably going to land in the grasslands, hopefully, so I can get some extra science once we land. Um, yeah, I'm going to do some physical time work because it's just going to take some time. And once I think I'm about 500 meters off the ground, I will slow physical time work. So, yeah, I've been a big fan of Scott Manley for some time now. Um, and I work with some kids at a high school, and I actually uh, teach some of them uh, on how to play Kerbal Space Program and understanding orbital mechanics. And uh, some of them actually recommended to me that I start recording my videos. Um, and, you know, like I, I, I'm not the kind of person who likes to talk into an empty room. But I, I figured, what the hell, why, why not give it a shot? So we'll see how this goes. Um, hey, if, if I get enough views, I'll keep doing it. If not, big freaking whoop. Alright, now we're just going to slowly fall back to Earth, so I'll re-enable Time Warp again. And unlike Hank plays video games, I am not a wimp at Time Warping. I wonder if Bandicam records uh, my Steam stuff. We'll find out once I look at the video. And... Oh, that was a waste. All right, get out, Jeb, you sad sack. You very sad sack. Sad, mildly amused sack. All right, get up. Whoa, okay. Let's go ahead and get an EVA report. I don't think a... Sp Hang on, let me let me try my uh, best Scott Manley accent. I don't think a... Oh my god, that was awful. Um... I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? No, it was not, Jeb. Jebediah. Okay, I apologize. Oh, and right, uh, without the astronaut complex, uh, I can't plant a flag. So there will be nothing to commemorate this first launch. Alright, get back in there, Jeb. Recover. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the uh, lovely loading screens of Kerbal. Alright, we've got... 17 science? Oh wait, don't we start with some science? I forget. But we've got science, uh, got some money back, lost the uh, solid rocket booster, but that's like the least of my concerns. Alright, and of course we got Jeb back. Of course. I will do my best not to kill him. So now we're going to go into the uh, research facility, go ahead and research our next step, and unlock all the parts too while we're at it. And so, that gets us the mystery goo. Um, can't unlock anything else just yet. But we get the mystery goo, some extra fuel tanks, and a decoupler. Alright. Let's go back. Set an altitude record of 22,000 meters. Definitely going to try that next. Try that landed at Kerbin. Sure, why the hell not. Uh, testing flight... Some of these have some very specific requirements, like you need to be going frickin' 100 to 200 meters a second, but you're at a really high altitude, which makes it really difficult. Same with, like, this one. Um, 
visual surveys of Kerbin. Now, for the career mode, oh, I'm running out of time here. Uh, let me. All right. Okay. We're gonna... Back. So Bandicam, the unregistered version, has a 10 minute, little, 10 minute limit on how long you can record the videos. And since it's my first time, I figured I wasn't gonna buy it right away. So try before you buy. Policy of mine. Uh, thanks, Gene. Okay. So um, for those of you who don't know, the visual surveys. Um, contracts ask you to do visual surveys at various heights um, around Kerbin or some of the other planets later on in the game. Some of these can be actually really easy to do and some can be difficult. This one looks plausible. Okay, just gotta check. Agency Experimental Engineering Group. Let's see. What? Because there's some very specific conditions to some of these contracts. So... Visual surveys, okay, this is the one. So this one, take a crew report below 19,600 meters near one. That's possible, that's doable here, but I don't think it's worth the risk, and I already have two contracts mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. yeah, I forgot about that. All right, uh, 2,200 meters, that should be a breeze, right? So we're gonna go back to the VAB. 2,200 meters. Take off the, rock, the solid rocket booster. Actually, I'm not even going to be creative here at all. I'm going to put a solid rocket booster, followed by, you guessed it, another solid rocket booster. Um, and to do the decoupler contract, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the decoupler right on the bottom activate just as I activate the solid rocket booster. Uh, that'll complete the contract without a whole lot of fuss. Um... Oh yeah, and I forgot to get science in the air last time. I'm an idiot. All right, let's get to 2,200 meters. Guys, if uh, my voice is a little grating, and uh, I've got kind of a croaky voice going on right now. Oh, that's nice. Uh, looks like the decoupler is actually in the ground there. That's interesting. And we're wobbling for some reason. Jeb, are you wobbling the craft? Okay, whatever. Uh, crew port, nothing. All right, let's launch. So we fulfilled the contract of testing the decoupler right away. Um, we'll come back and get that money later for the uh, part we used. So let's go ahead and head up to 22,000 meters, I believe. Yes. There's a lot of waiting in this game, so... I'm still learning how to fill in the silence, so I apologize. And I'm not Canadian, I swear. Because I, I apologize for everything. Jeb is happy as a clam. Can't see spit. I lo also love the awkward zoom you can do when you're in the, can in the uh, IVA. Crew report since I forgot to do that last time. Oh god, I'm gonna start uh, getting a little too high here. And I easily passed the uh, 2200 meters mark, and I'm hoping I don't go past whatever the next altitude record is because I really want to get that money early on. It, it pays off later. See, later, like, you can get some pretty nice contracts. Um, uh, but when you're first starting, like, you are really scrambling for money. Ooh, I, I'm probably going to go over the limit here. Um, and when you're scrambling for money, it really hurts, because you'll end up with lots of science that you can't use. You'll end up with, um, like, lots of reputation that you can't do anything with and you're stuck with parts that are below what you need to do more advanced missions that get you more money. And let's hopefully not escape the atmosphere because that's not what I want right now. Because that's another contract. No, dang it, I'm probably gonna escape the atmosphere. Oh well, that's money lost. And we're out of the atmosphere. 70,000 is the limit for those who don't know. Once you're above 70,000, you have left the atmosphere. Um, one of the fun 
Oh, hey, the parachute's still going. That's nice. Uh, one of the fun things I like to... That's pretty unrealistic. One of the things I like to mention to people is that it's actually not that... What KC, XKCD has said before is it's actually not that hard to get to space. All you need is a couple solid rocket boosters, as evidenced by Kerbal. And, yeah, you just fire them straight up. Getting into orbit is a lot bigger of a challenge because orbit, if you look at it, Shooting straight up is just going to get you plopping straight back down. As they say, what goes up must come down. Um, however, to get into orbit, you don't need to go up necessarily. Obviously, you need to go up to get away from the atmosphere, but that's the only reason you need to go up. The What you need to do is you need to be going so fast that you miss the Earth. It, it's like trying to avoid hitting the broadside of a barn. you, you got to go fast enough to the side to miss the barn. And in this case, Kerbin is the barn. Um, so what ends up happening is because gravity will always pull you down, is if you go so fast that you miss the Earth, or Kerbin, sorry, if you go so fast that you miss Kerbin, but you don't go fast enough to get away from it, gravity will pull you back, and that'll create a stable orbit. Um, we're still falling here, so do some time warping because end up doing nothing for most of the uh, time. Um, also, one of the benefits of Kerbal is you don't get re-entry heating, at least not yet, if they're going to implement it. I doubt they will, because it's punishing to newbies who already have a tough time ahead of them. But you get the fun of watching a uh, parachute work at twice the speed of sound there. Speed of sound, for those who don't know, is 370 meters a second. So generally not a good idea to activate parachutes when you're going faster than sound because that can destroy the parachutes. I, I, I don't know parachutes that are that good, but then again I'm not someone who's in the know for that sort of thing. Alright Jeb, you're alive again. And we will hit the ground soon. There's my shadow. One of the things to look for when you're landing is just to see if you can find your shadow. If you don't, then you need to turn up the graphic settings, or you're in trouble. Landing on the dark side sucks, and there's a fun uh, graphics glitch right there. That's interesting. Creates like a square type deal there. And of course we lose the solid rocket booster again. Alright Jeb, what do you see? I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? My Scott Manley impressions are getting ever better. Yeah, that's right, Jeb. Lazily stroll into the camera. Jump. Oh, he did a little flourish there. I didn't even tell him to do that. Jeb, you suck at hurdling. I, I, I'm, I don't want to be the one to break this to you, but you're terrible at hurdling. You're just happy. So happy. I have to say, sometimes it's fun to watch, just watch the ragdolls. The kids that I work with get a huge kick out of just ragdolling the curveballs. That was an interesting uh, camera glitch there. Alright, get back in the capsule, Jeb, and recover. <laughs> Let's see how we're doing on time. Oh, we're almost out of time here. Okay, um... So, this is a starter episode, to be honest. Uh, 12 si 12.5 science earned? Okay. Might as well finish up what I'm doing here. So, I'll come back to this later uh, in the next episode, assuming there is one, because I'm trying this out for the first time. So, we will come back, pick up later. I'm probably going to pick survivability, mainly for the LV-909 engine, which is wonderful for getting yourself into orbit or moving around space. The LVT-45, don't get me wrong, is good, uh, especially considering it's got thrust vectoring, but you need the 909 to really get around space. Um, the Rocco Max solid fuel booster would be nice, but it's not necessary yet. And the Separatrons you won't need until you start working with very big craft. Um, the radial decouplers are useful too, but we won't need them yet. Oh, and recover debris. Yay, money. Alright, so that is my first time recording. Uh, good night and good luck.
I guess. This is 3 in the clock in the afternoon. Later.